Welcome back, Kingswood. This is Nightwatch. We've got a lot of interesting stuff coming your way, so stay tuned. Hello, Kingswood. I hope you are having a great day. I'm Elizabeth Goldberg. And I'm Margot Farrell. And here are the announcements. Just a reminder, coming up this Friday is Class Color Day. Don't forget to pick up your class t-shirts. Also on Friday, we'll, we will have our pep rally in the main gym during D-Block. Sports teams, as well as the senior class performances, will be taking place during this time. Also coming up this Friday is the hallway decoration competition. Setup of the hallways tonight must be completed by 9 p.m. Judging will take place in the morning, so make sure you walk through to see what each class created in their hallways before it's torn down. King's Woodstock will be taking place on October 22nd at 7 p.m. For more information, contact Mr. Burns either by email or by one of his classrooms in the Arts Center. This past Friday, two FFA forestry teams and one tractor operation team Corroborated in Deerfield Fair, two of our forestry teams competition placed first in the tree ID and wood splitting events. Congratulations go out to Kylie Sellers and Cameron Cardinal. Respectfully, the forestry teams placed third overall for the day along with the first place ribbons. The tractor operation team of Logan Reed and Joshua Sanborn placed third overall in tractor safety and operation. Cameron Yates and Lucas Snyder fished in the NHIAA Bass Fishing State Championship. After finishing fifth in the state championship qualifier held in the pouring rain on September 22nd, Cameron and Lucas were able to pull out a sixth place overall finish in tough conditions in Lebanon on Saturday. And here's your lunch menu for the week. Monday is no school day, so I enjoy something at home. Tuesday is corn dogs. Wednesday is American chop suey. Thursday is chicken tenders. And Friday, as always, is pizza. Congratulations to our Athletes of the Week. Our Female Athlete of the Week is Anya Poloni. Anya is a standout on the freshman volleyball team because of her positive attitude. She is very focused, hardworking, and energetic. This is her first year playing volleyball, yet she has grown so much and become an example of an excellent leader. Her passing and hitting percentages led the team. Excellent job, Anya. And our Male Athlete of the Week is Brody Clark. Brody is noted by his coaches as someone who works hard on and off of the field and has turned into a leader on the football team. He has become a force of defense and had to turn into a very running back. He also had a highlight while kickoff return for a touchdown on Friday night. Great work, Brady. Here's our sports schedule for the week. And speaking of sports, here's Elliot. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Night Watch Sports segment, second edition of the year. So hopefully this is hypothetically where we start to hit our stride. Let's start with the NFL. Sunday Night Football is what I'm going to start off with here because I think it was a very interesting game. Uh, the Chiefs beat the Buccaneers, uh, and honestly, the final score wasn't even that close, but the final score doesn't even convey how not close it was. The, the Buccaneers just look awful. Brady kind of caught fire a little bit, and he, had some, he, puts, he strung together some good drives. I don't think he, I'm not going to call him washed or anything because you can't do what he did and be washed at the same time. But there was just a lot of times where their offense looked anemic. And oh, by the way, 
that Chiefs offense, the Buccaneers defense has been stout this season. They turned him into mincemeat. Side note here. I like Josh Allen. I like Kyler Murray. I like all these other quarterbacks in the league. But I got to say, it is ludicrous to suggest that somebody who isn't named Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. Mahomes is just, like, maybe not head and shoulders, but at least a forehead above everybody else in the league right now. That one, like, backhanded toss he had to the corner of the end zone, like, I, I don't even know how you do that. It's disgusting. Moving to Monday Night Football, more recent game. The Rams took on the 49ers. 49ers schlacked them. The Rams have not looked good at all this year. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe it's just a they came into the season too confident. They're missing Odell Beckham Jr. now. Maybe he was just a lot more important than I thought, but I didn't think he was that important. Maybe he comes back and they get way better, and it turns out that Odell Beckham Jr. is the most valuable player in the league. But the 49ers, minus Trey Lance, plus Jimmy Garoppolo, have now picked up their second consecutive win. And I got to say, as much as I am a big fan of Trey Lance, this is not a great look for him because they did not look great. He gets hurt. Garoppolo comes in. Suddenly, they're beating the defending champs. And it's like, oh, man, they should have just stuck with Garoppolo. No, they shouldn't have. Garoppolo has a ceiling on him. We know this. Okay, let's not get fooled again. He's a cute little guy. He can get him to the playoffs. He can win a playoff game or two. They're not going to win a Super Bowl with him. I'm sorry. I don't like being mean, but it's just what it is. I don't want us to fall into the same trap. But... I digress. The Rams have not looked great. Moving on to the Patriots themselves. Uh, well, it took on the Packers. It sure was a game. It was closer than I thought it would be, so that was, that was good for them. Um, the good news about the Patriots not being really contenders at all this year is that I can kind of just like sit back every Sunday and watch them try to play spoiler, which is actually more fun than contending. Here's a fun fact. It's actually not more fun than contending. I'm just lying to myself to make myself feel better. But anyway, because like, if they win, it's like, aha, we beat you, you just lost to a bad team. And then if we lose, it's like, well, yeah, you beat us, duh. Um, once Mac Jones gets back, maybe they'll look a little, a little bit better. But right now, it just feels like they lack that one playmaker to give them, spark, to give them some spark to their offense whenever they need it. Um, that's, they've been lacking that basically forever. But, you know, I just figured I'd still point it out because it is a little bit of a problem. Moving on to baseball. Aaron Judge hit his 62nd home run of the year, breaking the American League record. Uh, good job, man. Um, I got to be honest, though, I'm more so happy you did it just because now ESPN will stop cutting away from other things every time he has an at-bat. I understand, like, the why of why they did it, but it was a little bit annoying, although I am a Red Sox fan, so it's probably, I'm not exactly the most neutral voice on this. I will have more to say about this and the topic of baseball and the home run record uh, next week on my show, Get Real, so check that out if you want to hear my full thoughts on this. Uh, but... That'll largely wrap it up for me. Hi, I'm Elliot Kiesler. You just saw me over there. Watch my show, Get Real. It's on this YouTube channel and my own and Wolfboro Community Television. It's going to be great. There's a lot of sports on it. Yeah. Thank you, Elliot. Now it's time to torture ourselves with dad jokes. Keegan. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Dad Jokes. I'm your host, Keegan Quinn, and today I'm joined with Keegan and Austin playing the drum set for me. Are you guys ready to hear some jokes? Yeah. Okay, then. You know, I like telling dad jokes. Sometimes he laughs. A friend recently said she didn't understand cloning. I told her that makes two of us. Here is some advice. In order to get out of, get over claustrophobia, you should really start thinking outside of the box. And just a friendly reminder, please come to the Kingswind Music Department's mattress sale on October the 8th. This is an event you actually can sleep on. Please talk to Mr. Barnes for more information. And now, back to the desk. So, that happened. We have one more announcement for you that just popped up. The James Foley Freedom Run is taking place on Saturday, October 15th at the James Foley Community Center in Rochester. Jim was a 1992 graduate of Kingswood and a conflict journalist who was tragically executed by the Islamic State in 2014. The Freedom Run raises funds for the James Foley Legacy Foundation and supports its mission to advocate for American hostages held abroad, support and protect American journalists, and raise awareness about Jim's legacy of moral courage. 
Register today and join the GWRSD Legacy Team. See Mr. Carmel in room 211 for details. For more information about the Kingswood Music Department's mattress sale, contact Mr. Burns in any of his classrooms in the Art Center. Thanks for watching. This was Night Watch. I'm Margot Farrell. And I'm Elizabeth Goldberg. And that's it.